Hey folks. So today we have another linear tracking turntable. So this is the iconic Technix SL10. Linear tracking turntable that's fully automatic, direct drive, quartz locked, and uh, really innovative for its time. So this came out in uh, 1979. And late 70s and the early 80s are kind of the peak of the vintage turntable era and very much owned by the Japanese in the early 70s. Um, I'd say the early 70s were owned by the Germans. You had Thorins and Duel. Um, by the late 70s, the Japanese were bringing, you know, engineering innovation technology. Their, um, obviously, their manufacturing skill to, uh, to these turntables and uh, put out some amazing, amazing products, including this one. So, um, what's so innovative about at the time is that the overall size, form factor from uh, the width and the, and the length is the size of a, a record jacket. Um, and it's really quite remarkable, but it is, it is, it is the case. And, um, <clears throat> but uh, despite that, this is uh, a, a, you know, a very serious product with uh, excellent sonic qualities and it, uh, they didn't, they didn't skimp. In fact, they threw pretty much threw everything at it. Uh, so it's pretty much all metal construction from the, from the standpoint of the case, obviously the uh, clear plastic insert uh, is not, but <laughs> um, wonderful construction, uh, weighs over, over 14 pounds, so, so quite solid, and uh, really innovative use of, uh, use of technology. So you have uh, not only the form factor, but the uh, linear tracking. So um, just a few cover a couple cosmetic details. I'll go ahead and turn it on. Um, so I'd say this one is excellent in near mint really in every way. So in the outer case there's a, a couple of blemishes to the to the paint. Um, I see, see another there. Uh, but overall, overall really nice. Um, the plastic inset uh, has been uh, was actually removed. You have to very carefully remove a trim strip there and then uh, that there's screws actually to remove this, and so I did that in order to um, mainly to, mainly to uh, access the mechanism from the top as well and make sure everything uh, is thoroughly cleaned and, and adjusted and in, in, in proper order. Uh, but while I had it out, I polished that. So what's nice about that is the lettering, the uh, the lettering is on printed on the bottom. So these are often you know kind of scratched up, and it limits your ability to. Uh, you know the clarity and the ability to see in. So, because that lettering is on the inside, these you can just polish these really well when they're outside out of the unit. And so, you know, great clarity. The light gets in there. Now it is it is a tinted. Um, the visibility on these units isn't isn't as, isn't fantastic, but you can see in there, and that's you know that's important to me uh, to be able to see the turntable operating. That's a lot of the fun of using a turntable. So. Uh, you know, then if we look at, you know, the control panel, the bright work is all excellent. And if we look on the inside, it's pretty much mint on the inside, um, as many of them are. The platter's in excellent condition. The uh, um, mat, you know, no oxidation to the platter. Uh, everything looks, looks and feels wonderfully. So, um, you know, and the feet, feet are in excellent condition as well. So. Um, and really just fully detailed inside and out. So it's, it's in wonderful sh condition. Um, functionally, the, the mechanism was disassembled to the point where it can be meticulously cleaned and uh, um, then lubricated properly for, for superb function, as well as obviously hit the, uh, hit, put in the new toner on belt at the same time. Um, all the, the controls, so all these controls, this is, there's a control panel inside of there the on-off switch actually travels from through the unit and presses on the switch under here. But all that was removed uh, so that all of this can be cleaned. So all the grime that accumulates around these switches, you know, over the decades has been, been cleaned out. And I mean, just wonderful look and feel to that. Um, motor spindle was uh, was removed to be cleaned and, uh, and lubricated. And uh, one thing that I don't really see almost anybody doing is a full uh, full electrical calibration. So most critical being the um, uh, servo sensitivity adjustment. So that you're tracking, one of, one of the, say, 
things that people will complain about with some of the linear trackers are like, well, it gets out of, it gets the, the you get your angle uh, error in the tracking and then it cracks and then the angle and crack. So you want it to be really frequent small corrections so that it's moving, you know, as close to continuously as possible. And getting that servo sensitivity adjustment is absolutely critical to that. Um, the LED here is excellent. That's actually a strobe. There's a uh, strobe pattern printed on top of the, um, the clamp right here. The, the, uh, the queuing lamp, you can actually maybe see it right there, but there's a queuing lamp, and that was replaced with a correct incandescent lamp. So, um, you know, I, I, I typically don't upgrade to, uh, or, you know, use the word loosely upgrade, but change to an LED just because the incandescent gives the proper look. And a new one, uh, they're rated for about 10,000 hours, so it's, it should last, last quite a while. Um, and I do ground, ground the RCA cables internally on these units so that you don't need to deal with uh, a ground strap and uh, you don't have to worry about hum. Um, and the, you know, when you correct, connect your RCAs, you're gonna just get good sound without having to worry about that. And then finally, I fit a, um, a new a new stylus, it's actually a vintage cart, so it's AT112, which was a very good cart. Um, and I fit it with a new old stock stylus, so uh, which is the ATN112EP. Uh, so um, that stylus is new, save for the few hours that, uh, that I've, uh, that I've been uh, enjoying the turntable. I always like to make sure that uh, you know, I, I put the turntable into my, all turntables that I work on, I put them in my system and uh, make sure, uh, you know, use them over a period of several weeks to make sure they are, um, you know, ready for the outside world. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and do a demo. So the tone arm tracks in the lid and uh, um, so it's fairly short, I think it's about four inches, uh, four inches or so. Um, but it's dynamically balanced. It does have, a, you know, its own counterweight in there. It's dynamic, dynamically balanced. So you, you may have seen, if you're watching any other videos, that um, these can be played at an angle. They can even be mounted to a wall. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of one of the neat features because of this, uh, because of the record clamp. Um, and the dynamic balance on the tone arm, you can do that. So let's go ahead. Now there is a... Um, integrated adapter which I'll try to remember to do a 45 demo but this catches on either side so the and these catches are in, are in excellent shape and very smooth um, so it's really simple to use so you got start stop queuing and repeat um, let's press start Classical record has pretty long lead-in groove there. So really at any time you can press your Q and then your start and stop become your uh, Q forward and Q back. So, or, you know, advance forward. So if you press, there are two position switches. So if you press them lightly, it moves slowly. Press them more firmly and, and it moves fast. And there's actually LEDs that are lighting. You get one or two. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video. And when the Q is up, your start your stop button rather is your is reverse and that's the same thing like slow or fast so you can cue to any por portion of the record um, obviously if you cue very close to, let's just cue to the end or very close to the end and it returns on its own you could press repeat I probably didn't catch it in time um, but if you press repeat then it'll just continually play that side of the record so uh, Yes, maybe. Yeah, I did catch it. So the light is on. It's repeating. So of course you can press stop at any point and it'll return. Um, you do press these uh, the buttons on either side to release the catches, and um, it opens fairly wide. So you have kind of your normal open position and a higher open position if you really want. Um, but open certainly opens wide enough for very easy access. And let's go ahead and do 45 records. So this is in 
Oh, one thing that's really nice about this unit and with later generations was uh, removed by Technics is uh, this is a turn switch. So you can use that to clean your record, you know, if you have a, um, uh, you know, a brush or any type of, you know, brush to clean your record, you can do that before you play. So really nice feature. Um, so it does have the integrated adapter. So um, you can kind of turn that a little bit counterclockwise. It has some serration so you can kind of catch it. And then let's go ahead and play a 45. So um, I think I was going to mention that it does automatically select for size as well as speed. Um, it can do 12, 10, or 7 inch record. There's actually three, um, three sensors in the lid here and they pick up on lights, uh, LEDs that are shining through slots in the platter. Um, but it will select the speed automatically depending on the record size or you can override that. So we'll just let it be automatic. I'm not sure if you noticed, but the queuing So when we queue up, um, that incandescent lamp illuminates, and then when you queue down, it stays on for about a second. So it stays on for about a second or so after you queue it down. It has a little uh, timer in there. Again, you have your repeat. So very simple to operate. Uh, I'd say essentially foolproof. Um, let's say if you press stop, or actually since we're queued up, the stop and start become your um, your 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 uh, movement switches, as we saw with the larger record. But if we queue down and press stop, let's um, go ahead and do that. Uh, you may have noticed it does have a muting switch, so when you don't hear the uh, the needle, you know, contact the record, it has a muting switch, and then it, it, it uh, the the sound comes in just uh, about half a second later. So um, pretty much foolproof. At any point, you could you could open the lid, um, even if you open the lid while it's playing, which I really wouldn't advise that. But uh, you're not going to damage anything. The, the needle will just lift off. Uh, the record surface and uh, it will return to its home position so um, it has a uh, switch back here and on the SL10 they had they had a reliable switch as opposed to the later units so uh, that's all in good condition so um, let me just uh, hit my cheat sheet here I think we hit all the all the highlights um, it's a really wonderful turntable, certainly iconic in this design, and uh, you know, very popular at the time, um, uh, increasingly popular now. It's uh, it's fun, it's uh, it's easy to use, pretty much foolproof, and uh, I enjoy it immensely, and hope you did as well. So, take care. Thank you so much.